Um, we're kind of talking about our game plan for what we've done so far to bump up to, uh, from uh, Drupal 5 to Drupal 6 and CCK. Other things that we still want to do uh, and try and get into the into the details. And then we also want to talk a little bit about what we might look at as a plan for moving uh, into D7 and getting some of this stuff into court. So uh, I'm just going to give you a little background, first of all, on TCK. I'm, probably most of you already know this, but I'm just going to run it up, you know, just, just in case. Uh, the TCK originated um, actually back before FAPI or any of those kinds of things. It was, it was, TCK has its own way of creating widgets, and it has its own way of doing formatters, and it has its own way of doing things, and it has its own way of storing uh, field information. And some of the things that we've been wanting to do for a long time are do things like get it using FAPI elements properly, using the form API properly, using themes properly, all those kinds of things. But to do that, we were going to have to break the API. And there were a lot of people using the API. There were a lot of contrib modules that expected things to be the way they are. And so we knew there was going to be a lot of pain at whatever point we went ahead and made the decision to make that change. Um, so we came into Sex thinking we might be doing it in Sex, and we started doing the port to Sex thinking maybe initially we'd kind of keep things the same and then think about how, much, how many changes we're going to put in, and immediately found that it was going to get broken anyway because of things like form state, which we suddenly had no way to get form state to the widgets and all those kinds of things. So we knew it was going to break, and we said, if we're going to break it, we might as well break it. And let's, let's do all the things that we've been talking about doing, and let's get them all in, and the API is going to change completely, and everybody's just going to have to figure out how this works uh, for DSEX, but it gives us an opportunity to get a lot of things in that we've been wanting to get in. Actually, uh, well, the the, the, the the current time time frame is uh, critical for, for CCK. Well, it's really important because, as Karen said, it's our one opportunity to uh, actually make all the changes we, we know we, we, we've been wanting to, to, to make for quite uh, about a year, actually. Mm -hmm. But we knew we couldn't uh, actually make because because we can't have things like uh, image field 1.4 requires CTK 1. Point, uh, we can't get into this kind of stuff. So it's our opportunity to uh, relieve from our frustration of all the features. And we know that uh, the most, the, well, some features, we get feature requests every uh, twice, th three times a month about the one or two same features that we know we can do uh, with the, the current uh, uh, TCK state. So now is our, uh, our one shot to actually make those things happen. And it's also our, our one shot to, to, to prepare, uh, can prepare things and uh, provide food for thoughts for uh, later the, the, the ultimate goal, which is getting some of that into core, which will require um, some refactoring and CTK Pro 6 will probably the, be the release way where we actually try some things out and prepare the, the ground for uh, um, core inclusion uh, or some of core inclusion in, in the 7 release. But we'll talk about that in, uh, in the second part of the presentation. Okay, so let's talk about what's already changed and there's a lot of these changes that are already in had. Um, we are actually, we played around with the idea whether we should show you code or not show you code, but the code is really in flux at this point. And we, if we put code up there and get everybody all focused on what the code looks like now, that may not be what it ends up looking like. So, we just, so we're, we're going to talk kind of in theory at this point. There are several areas that we wanted to look at. One is formatters. Formatters, uh, again, CCK had its its uh, own way of handling formatters. It's very nice to be able to have a little UI way of saying, give me such and such a formatter on the, on the page and a different formatter on the teaser and select a formatter when you're in use. So formatters are really handy, but they weren't doing something that was really logical, which is they weren't doing anything with themes. And so one of the changes is going to be formatters are going to be themes. Every formatter has a theme. It's just going to use the normal theme. We're going to keep the formatters is a wrapper around the themes to give you an easy way to select them, but every formatter is going to have a, have a corresponding theme, and you should be able to call that theme and get that format. Eric, you can get a name or a theme function or a theme template. 
Well, uh, an actual theme function, because what we're going to do is we're going to put pound theme into the known array so that we can do a triple right. render. Not, not a whole theme. Uh, like is a, whole a theme. theme. Okay, a theme function. Excuse okay. me. Yes, a theme function. Each each formatter should have a matching theme function that does its work, so that we can just put pound theme into the known array and and do a triple render. Um, schema API, you want to talk about that? Okay. One of the, the, the actually, uh, it's been several months since uh, we know that we want to get some, some parts or basically CTK in core. So during the, the, the previous Drupal conferences, uh, uh, there was some talk about, okay, how, we, how do we do that? What, what part can we, can, can we take out of CTK and, and get into core? And uh, the, the, work, the work that Barry Jensen did on, on the schema API is not, it, it, did, not start in, it did not start with um, CTK, but it, it can be seen as one part of CTK and one in really important part of CTK uh, gone into core. Uh, and that's when it's done. Uh, because CTK uh, had to implement it in its own version of the schema API, because when you define a field, a field module, you have to define what are the way, what is the way this field gets stored, what are the database columns, and this was a CTK contained schema API. So now that we have a, 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 a really solid schema API, API in core, there are, uh, there is a, a whole bunch of code in CTK that can simply go away. We have those. Uh, uh, nasty uh, switch on the DB type uh, MySQL, PG SQL, and PG SQL. I'm not even sure it even one day got uh, got working. Uh, but now we do rely on on, on uh, the schema API. It's mainly internal uh, restructuring and mainly <coughs> simplification and uh, code being delete deleted. Uh, there are some consequences for module, uh, field module authors, really minor, and um, one of the nice things uh, also about this schema uh, uh, API being now in, in core is that we are, we do have a, a much more flexible, uh, efficient way to uh, build our own queries, uh, which are the, the select query on uh, on a node load. Uh, to, to retrieve uh, field, uh, field data and the update insert when you edit or create a new node because it's, uh, I don't know if, uh, if I should say that it's one of the CTK's uh, dark little secrets for uh, Drupal 5 because uh, I don't know how many of you are aware that uh, um, the, the way that CTK stores its data is a little bit complicated or not that easy to grasp uh, because the, 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 the schema is moving, is dynamic, de uh, depending on which setting, it, whether a field is multiple or not, whether it's shared or not. Once you get that, okay, you get the picture, but the first uh, impression can be a little tricky. And the last secret is that uh, in order to, to load a node, we, make, we made a query per field. Even if most of the fields are stored in the same table, <coughs> but it's one query per field, and for the insert update, it's the same problem. So now, with the help of the schema API and the, the fact that we are much more aware of, we have metadata about our own uh, stru uh, storage structure. We can now be, uh, and this should be uh, much more. Test, uh, we should test that much more, but this is basically done uh, being able to load and insert uh, node data with much more, much less query. So that, uh, that should be much more uh, efficient. It's also going to give us um, some, new notes, uh, some new database types because we didn't have a real date time field, we didn't have a real decimal field, we do now with Form API, which means we can now do CTK fields that have those. And those have been issues in the past too. So, um, another thing, uh, multiples. Lots and lots and lots and lots of requests have been around having control over multiples, having control over the number of multiples, being able to do things like uh, having to add more buttons uh, on the multiple handling, 
uh, lots and lots of things like that. And the problem <coughs> in the current code is that the multiples are being handled by the widget or by the by the field module rather than by the content module, which means there's no coherent way that we could have any control over what they're doing with multiples. So one of the changes that we're making, and this is one of the really big changes, is we are changing the way that that is being done, and widgets are no longer doing their own multiple values handling. They're actually not building out those, you know, doing that big long for each and however else they were getting it done. The widget is only going to return a single form element. The content module is going to know how many form elements go on there. If multiples are selected, it will just keep asking for widgets until it's got as many as it needs. That means all the handling for multiples is in the content module. That means we can put things in the content module like a way to control how many delta, how many multiples do you want. Do you want to let the user have an unlimited number? Do you want to fix the number? Uh, we can put a little JavaScript, uh, add more fields in there so that it's a lot cleaner instead of having to do things like preview or save to get more fields. Um, Nate's already working on the, the jQuery uh, to do that. Uh, so, so that's a big change, but it, it really opens up a lot of possibilities. We have left the ability for, for modules to say, I don't want the content module to handle multiples if they need to do something with the multiples themselves. So basically the, the field modules can say, I'm going to let the content module handle my multiples, which I, I think in most cases is what's going to happen, or what I would think most of them would, would want to do. But if they have special cases, there's a reason why they don't want to have that handling go back to the content module. They can uh, take it to themselves. But that's really going to clean things up. Okay, then we get to the FAPI changes. We wanted to make widgets really use form API. They weren't using a form API at all, really. What was happening in the old code was you called a hook widget with an operation and it got called multiple times and it was doing kind of different parts of the process. It, it did a pre-process, it did a form, it did um, a post-process, it did a validate. So it got, that hook widget got called multiple times. And none of that was the way that Fappy does things. That was, that was the way that GCK did things. So instead, what we're going to do is the widgets are actually going to create their own processing strings. So the widgets are only going to get called, called once. They're going to get called once and attached to the form, and then the content module is done with them. If they need any further processing, they're going to do it the way that Fappy does it, which is you put a pound valid element validate or a pound process or whatever you need in there. And the widget's going to take, do, all the content module's going to do is plug that widget into the form. And the widget's going to do its own normal fabric processing from that point forward. What have you done? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we lost our whiteboard. Let's just browse the web. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So, a uh, widget, when called, will basically just return a, a Single el single Fappy element with whatever properties it feels like it needs on it. Yeah, the, the exact way that this is going to work is in Flux. We've been playing around with a lot of different possibilities, so I don't want to tell you exactly how this is going to work because I'm not sure I can tell you exactly how this is going to work. But essentially, the widget can, if it wants to, use hook elements, and we're going to actually have, I think, probably most of the core widgets are going to use hook elements to actually create. Um, a, 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 a widget so that you can do a form pound text text field or whatever and you'll get the text field handling. Um, so CTK widgets will no longer be bound to just no forms? You can use one yeah, well the, the idea is <coughs> this is kind of an intermediate step. One of the things we're going to do is we're going to pass field information to the element. You know, with, you do, you create an element um, and we're just going to add our own value, pound, pound field, or something like that, to say, but here's all the field information that you normally would have gotten through hook widget, but that way all the subsequent processes, like um, element validate, will have that information because they only have the element when they get, you know, when you get down to that level, all you've got left is the element. So they're going to have access to that field information and they can use that to do whatever they need to do based on how that field was defined. But the idea is, any, if, if you pass something that looks like a valid field, field information, 
you should be able to put that widget anywhere. And if you look back in the way that the widget code is looking now, it used to be full of things like uh, my field, delta zero, uh, value, blah, 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 blah. All that stuff is out of the widget. The widget is no longer care what the field name is. The, field, the widget is agnostic about what the field name is because all of that's being handled by the content module. The widget is just creating the element that goes into that, into that delta, which should mean that, that you can plug a widget into anything because the widget is no longer tied to the field that it's being put on. So there's more work to be done on that, but it, it, it opens up possibilities for widgets on widgets, and, and, and we're already playing around with that. Node reference used to create its own select, and we already had option widgets select, creating a select. That's silly. Why do we need to do that? Now option widgets creates a select, and node reference just uses the option widget select. There's no reason to recreate it. Other fields that need a select could also use the option widget select. There's no need to recreate all that code. The, the fact that uh, TTK widget will um, um, be more reusable and be used somewhere else than strictly node, uh, node form, form uh, does not actually mean that uh, TTK will handle mm -hmm. right. uh, storing data for other stuff than node. Uh, for TTK, uh, for Drupal 6 and TTK for Drupal 6, fields will stay on nodes, this is for sure. Uh, but the actual work that you put into coding a, a, a nifty widget uh, in, your, in your field module you can also gain the ability to use that widget somewhere else. Uh, I think the, the typical uh, example would be a color picker uh, uh, widget. So you, you could uh, put some work into uh, developing, de de implementing your, your widget and having it, having it used uh, both in CTK uh, widget style and in uh, any forms. So it reduces the amount of work you have to do. But fields are for nodes. The, uh, this won't change. So it's still, yeah, you this is for later. So you yeah. use the color uh, picker widget, and then in your form submit handler, you grab the data out of it and do your own stuff with it. Right. Bless you. Yep. Basically, the, what we're trying to do is, you know, this is a step in the direction that we're trying to go. But this, this is a step in the sense of making widgets agnostic about where they are. And yeah, that's step one. Yeah. yeah. The uh, example Jeff Beaton and I love to use is five star module implements a pound type equals five star, and the TCK widget basically is called pound type equals five star, and that's what displays the TCK. But five star also stands alone by itself when you're doing the rating widget on uh, the viewing side. So the same thing will happen for every TCK widget. That every TCK widget will be pound type equals something new. Can you all hear in the back? He, he was talking about using Firestar. Yeah. Um, you want to talk about transformation? Yeah, and well, so um, oh, besides okay. these uh, large areas of uh, uh, upgrading TTK uh, to, to, to Google 6, there are other miscellaneous features that uh, we might want to add at some point, or if we can, or if people submit patches uh, that are, um, we can go through a, a quick list about that. Probably one of the first ones is, uh, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not sure it's even worth okay, bothering yeah. with that. All right, we won't worry about it. What, what, we'll, what we'll try to do is we'll try to get this list posted someplace right. okay. okay, one of the first uh, new features in, in, in Drupal 6 is a uh, translation feature. Uh, you can have no, uh, node content be translated, so you can have several language versions uh, for, for a given node, which are basically different nodes that get associated in a group, translation group. So uh, we have a very small amount of work to do to uh, uh, have CTK fields in nicely integrate with that. This will be probably done when uh, CTK Drupal 6 uh, uh, releases. Uh, more advanced features could be, um, could be imagined that might have to wait until uh, <coughs> CTK 6 
2.1 or 2.2 release, uh, such as having fields be shared uh, 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 between translations, because uh, you have a text field which is a <coughs> description. That one will probably need to have its own version for each one of your translations. And then maybe you have a number field, which doesn't make any sense to uh, uh, add different <coughs> versions for that. So you could require uh, this field to be disabled on, uh, on node edit forms uh, for, uh, for that one. But at the same time, <laughs> if, the, if that number field is a phone number, maybe it would require having a different phone number for the French version of the node if it's a, a, a support uh, a phone call uh, phone number or an, a, a different phone, uh, phone number for a, a UK uh, version. So there, there are nice features, but we have to think about uh, a UI for those uh, from that primary. We have, we have a question? Yes. Uh, is, is anything on your roadmap related to building relations between nodes, not just the uh, entities? Real, no, we're not, we're we're not worrying about relationship management, really. I, I think uh, relationship management is handled by uh, node reference module is part of yeah. CTK core, but it's it's a field module, so it can have its own set of enhancements, improvements, refactoring. That's not uh, actually what we're focusing on right now. And I guess uh, there has been many debates on having a, a rich relation field module for CTK. I'm not sure where the, the things currently are. And right now I think node reference is one of the only uh, relationship tool we have at hand. And There's no relativity as well. Which is yeah, and I'm not, I, I actually don't know where, uh, where things are uh, with this. But, but at least in core CCK, we're not planning on doing anything else than that. We've got a long, long list already. Node reference would be one yeah. of the best candidates for being moved out of CCK default bundle and uh, um, be its own project with its own maintainer if anyone's yeah. interested. Because there are a lot of features that could go in there and not much time and hands to do that. Are these features anywhere listed? What? Uh, there's a feature, uh, feature request uh, in yeah. the issue queue. Yeah, you can just go do it. On the issue queue you can do a search okay. and search for feature requests and you can see them. But it's not uh, yeah. formalized um, anywhere else. Um, another, uh, well, another new feature in, the, in Drupal 6 are the, is the batch API, which allows us to uh, perform <laughs> massive operations which can be time consuming and uh, at the same time ensuring we don't get hit by a PHP timeout. And there are several uh, housekeeping operations in CTK that we've been reported can, can, can time out when you, get, when you have a large amount of, of nodes. And when those timeouts, you, your database uh, is pretty much fucked up. <laughs> so, um, we, we, do, we, we do need to, to, to have those um, secured and the batch API. English really good. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, we actually, the, the CTK housekeeping um, was one of the, the primary, primary reasons why I, I started to work on the, on the batch API for Chrome. So now that we have that, we need CTK to start using it. And, and there have also been kind of uh, holes or, or places in in, uh, in the current module that maybe don't clean themselves up as well as right. they ought to because we knew we had we were going to have timeout problem. We didn't even try and implement it. When, when you when you delay it, when you do we a content type that has an image field, your right. images don't get delayed. delayed. Yeah. Um, so back and all, with, with the ability of using the batch processing, we should be able to do a lot better cleanup of the database. Okay, next. Well, there are obviously UI enhancements that we could consider. I, I think actually Earl Miles is, is, is uh, considering uh, requiring something like jQuery UI for use to. If he does, 
we might consider doing so as well because this will basically uh, mean that jQuery UI is uh, required for most Google sites. Please don't do that. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but I kind of had this discussion with Earl. Uh -huh. And panel two we had on our site, and we had updated jQuery 1.2, and it broke whatever. And I had to actually go in with raw SQL manipulation because it didn't degrade at all. Okay. So I'm totally cool with enhancing the UI of jQuery, but CCP and View are the two modules that every site needs to use. So please, please don't make it require jQuery the UI. Just use that for enhancing CCP. Mm -hmm. Okay, good point. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I think so. There are the, um, we, we attended the, the panel's two presentation yesterday and all uh, pointed, pointed out that what we need to do now is to provide hooks for panels two, actually to be able to uh, display a single field in a specific panel area and add lots of uh, nice uh, uh, layout, node layout and node edit form layout. Uh, this is something that we really accept patches for. Uh, <laughs> that, that should not, that should not, should not be that hard. But then again, I'm not sure. Uh, but we, we have lots of stuff to do just to get the core of CTK move on. So this has to be done. Panels to integration has to be provided. Anyone, anyone is welcome. <laughs> Stop volunteering or asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that Earl said he wasn't sure about was whether each uh, guild module would have to implement its own panel to book or if I think, think we could go generic on that one. I, 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 I would imagine we could so far we went generic on views yeah. exposed data. Yeah. Yeah. And I it had its, its, its limitations. We we found a way to uh, um, be feature rich and provide sensible people. I, I would guess that the starting point would be let's we'll try and find a way to do it at the content module level and then back to something else that doesn't I think work. we do have the right concepts and uh, tools to, to be generic. It's about uh, displaying a field. We know how to do that already, uh, whether it be on a node display page or in a panel area. So I don't think that should be different. And display, uh, displaying a, a, a field widget editing uh, subform, and we know how to do that too. So I'm not sure uh, field modules would need to uh, uh, implement specific panels to uh, uh, data themselves. We should be able to do that. Would it make sense to allow them to? They needed to, like they yeah. have need an extra config form. Well, that's that's kind of what happens with the views handling now. They have an option. But I, I would like to back up on that. And, um, we don't want to get too deep. I mean, that's not even related. So yeah. We're not going to get too deep into that. Um, other interesting. Oh yeah, we had we had a um, we actually could uh, get into Drupal six a minimum a, a very minimal uh, version of uh, node style, um, which is. Uh, before, before in Drupal 5, we couldn't tell, CC couldn't tell if we were rendering a node because it's being indexed by the, the search engine or because it's being rendered for a, a, an RSS item. So we output the same thing uh, anyway. And it's absurd because uh, the, the field labels get indexed. So if you, you, you uh, define a field and you give it the label, information, when you search information, you get all your notes, <laughs> because it's, it's a field label, and it's absurd. And uh, now, uh, we are, Core has the ability to tell us that we're rendering a note because we're re uh, indexing, indexing the site. So we have the ability to add two more columns in the display field tab. You know the one where you, you choose the formatters for a full node or teaser mode? So you'll have the ability to say what fields get indexed by the search engine, to, to say what fields do appear on uh, nodes uh, in RSS items, and limited to that for now. Hopefully in... <laughs>
No. No. So it's just purely volunteer driven. Sure. Um, do you would you guys be able to put together some kind of thing that lays out like estimation of like man hours or whatever for some of this stuff? Because I would love if we could all I and mean, here's however many Drupal shops here, we could all pitch in together and take well, you guys. I'm glad to get the thing.
we've spent a lot of time over the past couple of days ironing out um, the current state of core, where we think core is heading, like Google 7 and stuff like that, where CTK is at and where it's going, and what the best battle plan for that is. A really, really big portion of that is first stripping down how much CTK actually does itself. That's what they were well, yeah, exactly. That's what they were talking about, you know. We've implemented parallel APIs for lots of different things in lots of different ways in Drupal, and CCK is now moving to be lightweight metadata wrappers around core things. So it's like, instead of having a separate widgets API, we start treating form API elements that are already there as primitives that widgets get built out of, and it's just a metadata wrapper around those things. Which means that suddenly, you can define that in an info hook that returns a definition array, rather than a big function that goes and builds a form itself. Same thing with formatters. Hypothetically, validators could use a similar approach where you say, these kinds of data types I can validate, these kinds of widgets I can validate, stick it onto them. It's a good, happy thing. And it also means that with the addition of schema API and pieces like that, more and more of those conceptual problems that need to get solved are moving into core. And the one problem that really remains that CCK has to solve, and does solve, is this idea of fields. Not just a string or a number that you jam onto a node, because the node is this big dumping ground of data, but the idea of a field being something with meaning that could be six database fields that are stored in your database. A field could be an XML file that you display in certain ways. A field could be an image or whatever. But this idea of field as the building blocks of our content rather than just nodes that we dump stuff into and then render in certain ways, that's the big thing that CCK brings to us. And more and more stuff has been moving towards that as the value of that is recognized. Um, we had a, the future of nodes discussion um, earlier on DrupalCon. Um, something that I'm proposing and have gotten thoughtful nods from various people, although we know how much that counts for right now, I mean, but I think it's a very sound direction to move in. For Drupal 7, we really move towards the idea of structured nodes, where instead of just modules dumping stuff onto nodes, we have a fields collection on each node where we store the data that's loaded by different modules. That's a big change for us in certain ways, but what it means is when you define hook node info to set up your content type, with that approach, what you then do is just have a fields collection in that hook node info. It says, I want a text field. I want it to have multiple, multiple um, values. I want it to use this validator. I want it to use this formatter by default. And I want it to use this editor widget by default. And go on down the line for the types of fields that you would want on a node. Currently, that's how CCK would do things internally. 